Hi, I'm Leonie Martin for Action Against Hunger Germany. At the Human Rights Film Festival 2020, we screened the film Battle of the Giants. And today I have the opportunity to talk to the director of the film, Ernan Sin. If you haven't done it yet, you can watch the movie online. Visit hrffb.com. And as well, if you want to learn more about the topic or how you could get engaged, also visit hrffb.com. Hi, Arnan. First of all, I would like to thank you for agreeing to this interview and sitting down with me. And first of all, I would like to shortly introduce yourself um, or say a bit about your background. If I understood correctly, you um, studied political sciences in Argentina and uh, foreign relations. But after that, you became a, um, a war correspondent for quite a time. But after that, you decided to focus more on documentaries. So could you tell me and our audience just quickly why you decided to shift this focus more towards uh, documentaries? Well, thank you, Anne. It's great to see you and to talk to with you, Leonie. I think, uh, well, for many years I've been writing and yeah, and for newspapers and books and uh, well, the, the, as everybody knows, the, the news the organizations are not doing very well. So in the beginning, it was a question of uh, necessity, you know, to 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 shift more from the written world to the to the to the audiovisual. And but then I realized that really documentaries you can reach so many people. My last four films are on Netflix, and uh, every day I get like twenty. 30 messages from all, all all over the world. I think the power of images, it's really really what moves the world. I, I miss the written world because I think the books, can, you can go really deep into a subject. While with a documentary, you sometimes you stay on the surface. But on, on the good hand is that you reach and you can change things and you can reach millions of people. Great. Yeah, and I think you did. At our, this year's festival, we will show Battle of the Giants. Um, so how did you prepare for this special movie, for this documentary? How did you uh, come up and feel the, or why did you feel the urge to address especially hunger in so different places in the world? Well, hunger is, uh, we don't see it and uh, it's always there. No? And I was really concerned about German. I was trying for some time to go to Germany to film, but then I wasn't allowed and I was really worried. I mean, nobody was telling the story of Germany and you have, or, South, or even South Sudan, which was which was having a great hunger at that time with war. So for me, it was important to, to focus on this subject. And there was another part which was important for me. I was approached to this documentary, it wasn't my own production, but uh, they told me, you should go with a camera, with an anchor, and go around the world showing hunger. And I say, no, we are on the 21st century, and I think we have things have to change. I think pe people can tell the story by themselves, and that's 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 a that's a starting point of uh, Battle of the Giants. You know that it's not us telling the story; it's them telling their own story, which I think is a great change of paradigm and uh, a change of uh, yeah something we should be very aware of at this age of the of our history. That was actually the thing or the aspect which impressed us the most, but it's also quite risky, isn't it? So I would like to follow up on that because um, you decided to give the protagonists the autonomy about their own story, but did you provide like the scene or the setting or did you um, propose certain certain topics or certain ways to tell this story? How did you also coordinate with the protagonists themselves these interviews? Well, it was a logistical nightmare. I mean, just imagine sending like 50 mobile phones to cellular phones, to people around the world, people in countries where they're having hunger, like Bangladesh, Philippines, uh, Jordan, which Syrian refugees, Niger, well, sending mobile phones to all these countries and uh, with a guide in every language to explain the people how to use them. First, they have to record horizontally, not vertically, which is something natural when we grab a phone. Then they have a series of questions of how to represent their life, their needs. And uh, then it was a logistical nightmare of how to get all these images back, you know? And it was all the time back and forth with them, like, I got the material, I watch it, we translate it, and then I ask them for new things. And uh, I also wanted to listen to their ideas. So it was, it was in, at, a, at a certain time, at a certain part, it was very diff difficult. It was very 
yeah, it was very hard and very complicated. But on another part, it was very easy because people, when they are suffering and when, when they are going through these extreme situations, they want to talk. They have a need to talk. And we have the, we have the duty to listen to them. So in that respect, it was very easy. The, everything we were getting back in Madrid, it was like, wow, this is amazing. Every shot we got, it, we were really, I'm really thankful to the people. They have been very generous, especially the women, opening their heart and sharing uh, what, is, what it means to, be, to have hunger in the 21st century. Absolutely. I would like to come back to the question or the role of women um, in regard to this question a bit later. First, I would like to ask, would you say this, this coordination with the protagonists was the biggest challenge of this whole project or were there also unexpected obstacles you didn't, um, you didn't see or you, did you learn also something new out of this remote process, which I think is not a common way of producing a film, but very innovative. Yes. I mean, it was very difficult. Well, also with local authorities, you have all these frictions and you all of a sudden you are sending like a $500 telephone, mobile phone to a very poor community. I create, uh, you know, disturbances, jealousies. We have to be very careful and take many considerations and, uh, yeah, and very, keep a very, like, uh, keep keep an open dialogue and, and be uh, speak to them every day. That was the most difficult part. But I think it's a, it's a trend. Uh, I think it's a trend that you sh we should be having more of this kind of films in the future, where it's not like someone from the West that goes and tells the story of someone from the South. No, I like the people of the South to tell their own stories because now they have the means. I mean, with the mobile phones, everything changed. And... Uh, I remember when I was filming Born in Syria, which is now on Netflix, first thing when, when the refugees were coming to Greece, uh, Syrian refugees, they were not, not asking for food or for, or for water, they were asking for, uh, for, some, for a plug to charge their, their mobile phones. No, the mobile phone is like a, such an important tool for everyone in Africa, in Asia, even if they, in Congo, you find, you find so many people with mobile phones. So these people know how to tell the story. So I think we should try to go further with that, right? That the new films in the future are done by the people in their own country. We can only be just a bridge, like, like I was in, in this documentary. I completely agree. That's, that's a great way of like, changing the narrative of, um, I think, storytelling, at least Western storytelling. This is truly great. So who were, uh, or how did you, did you find also this, this protagonist? How were you introduced to them? Um, did, for example, the, the ACF staff uh, or staff in the field um, play a certain role? And a further question would be, how did you convince these people to open up? So I, I could imagine, you said they ha have a need to, to tell their story. But on the other hand, they, show, they showed very grave situations, situations of hunger, of death of loved ones and the situations of flight, which I think is or could be quite hard to talk about in front of such a, such a um, huge um, audience. So how did you maybe also got, got in contact and convinced them to open up like this? Okay, yeah, I was working with the people of Action Against Hunger, which they do, they do an amazing job all around the world. Uh, I wasn't aware of how many projects are in how many countries and how effective it, it is. Till, till I started working with them. And uh, they offered us the huge net network of projects around the world, from the Rohingya camps to Niger to, 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 to well, to Philippines. With the, it, was, it was amazing. I, I didn't know they have so many projects. Regarding approaching the people, I've been doing this for 22 years. It's very easy. I mean, I, I always believe that people want to tell the story. We all, we all want to... When I was living in India many years ago, but many years ago, and I was I was on a trip and I had malaria and hepatitis at the same time, and I was I was in a public hospital lost somewhere. There were no mobile phones at that time, and I thought I was gonna die, and I was very angry. Not because I was gonna die, because nobody knew. No, so it was like a double a double injury in a way, a double offense. I mean, I was dying, but nobody knew. I was suffering, and I was suffering. So I think we all want the people, the, the world to listen to us when we are going through something very unfair and very unjust. And my experience working in war zones and, uh, and working with, in extreme poverty situations is that when you arrive and you, 
you are very open to the people. You just tell them, look, I want to be a bridge from your words to to the world. And I, and they see you have empty hands and your heart is open. They always say yes. They, and nobody has ever told me no. I mean, because I really believe that communication is what changes the world. And uh, if we see history and we see all these iconic images from like the girls running in Vietnam, burned with Napalm and all these very strong images, this these images, they have changed the world. So I believe that it's very important that we have more information, more first-hand information, and more powerful images in order to, to, to push reality to keep on changing and improving. So I, I believe, I have a lot of faith, and people see this, and they also have a need, so it's a perfect match, and there wasn't any problem. And, thanks, and thankfully, I have all this amazing network of uh, action against hunger, and uh, we work together really well. It was a pleasure. Wow, that's great to hear. And I think we have to, to thank our Spanish colleagues for setting up this amazing project. So you were touching already the aspect of storytelling in this regard. Um, so you once you said in an interview I read from 2017, you said you have been traveling a lot or for over 20 years and you witness and document human suffering. So. What would you say is the most powerful impact storytelling, storytelling can have, especially regarding such a structural problem? It's, it's, it's a problem which has been or we are dealing with for decades or even centuries. So how would you, how would you consider this role of, of filmmaking, but maybe also other kind of stories like you said, articles, books, etc.? Well, what do you mean? What will the role in what sense, uh, Leonie? What would what could be an impact in the like real world? Um, yeah. How can also storytelling can uh, change the perception we have about hunger, about this problem which happens, this catastrophe mm -hmm. which happens every day all over the world, um, and especially at the, considering the the medium of film, but maybe also other 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 me media like articles or um, books. Yeah, yeah. I think the challenge with with hunger is that war is easy to portray. You arrive, there's a bomb fell. You 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 go to the house where the bomb fell. You run to the hospital with the family. Then you go to the morgue. You go to the funeral. It's more or less always the same scheme, and it's very obvious, and you can see it. No, with hunger, the the challenge is that you don't see hunger. Hunger is underneath. Hunger is uh, hidden and a. Uh, is so subjective in a way, and, uh, and people suffer it in silence mostly, you know? More, mostly women and children. So it's very hard to put it into images. But uh, if that's a good thing uh, that, that nowadays uh, as, as, as individuals, as consumers, we have a lot of power. So all this information, we can really focus it on changing things. Uh, in a part, we, we have a lot of power to destroy the world, which we are doing through climate change as consumers. But if we, if we do the right things and we turn and we start consuming and, and being more aware of that everything we do has an impact somewhere else, then uh, we can change things. So the more information, the better. doesn't matter if it is books, documentaries. And uh, I think we should, we should move forward. We shouldn't have any hunger at this time of history. It's, uh, It's really nonsense. We should have pandemics as well. We should have worked more preventing all these very easily preventable things. And everything has to be regarding being in balance with the world where we, where we live and nature and, uh, and other people. No? And uh, I think we have a great chance with COVID to, to change, to, to stop now that we have to stop and to think again if we need so many things, if we need to travel so much, if we need to spend so much money, or we'd rather have a more meaningful life and live like day by day, committed to others and uh, try not to have an impact and it's such a negative impact on other people and on the world. If we consume more than we can, then we are depriving other people of having what they deserve. So it's all a question of balance. We were really out of balance. COVID has shown us this. So I think we have a good opportunity to start to have a fresh start. Great remarks. Thank you. So. Regarding, for example, this, this pandem pandemic, which shows us so brutally um, that we have to slow down, would you consider realizing more of these remote productions or working more remotely for, in, um, to not having to fly, for example, or to um, also encouraging people in very remote areas to tell their own stories? 
Yes, I think it, it gives us a great opportunity, and, and we're working on that. We are working on three films about COVID. We have been working since March, and uh, part of this is working remotely. I'm, I'm very proud, and uh, now you can find great people film me everywhere, and they are very skillful, and they, they know how to tell a story. They have their own voice, and we only have to listen to it and just put it together. And uh, we have that know-how, and that's what we can offer. Yeah, but I think, yeah. I used to take like 80 airplanes every year. Now I haven't taken one in eight, in five months and I feel great. And I feel uh, I feel very happy. I think this very traumatic what's happening with COVID and uh, it has affected many people I know and I've been through ICUs and I've been to ambulances. And I saw terrible things, but at the same time, it's a, it's a great opportunity for all of us as a species to slow down and, uh, yeah, and, and start doing things in, other, in a different way, starting from storytelling. I think that's a great... It's a great idea. We, we have to move for, forward and deeper. Yeah. Great. Yeah, it's, it's a great example to rethink our way of also uh, working together and realizing so different projects. Um, I would like to ask you one last or one of the last questions regarding the role of women, because you already mentioned um, their importance. And in the film, you show mostly mothers in their homes, talking about um, especially the hunger of their kids and their um, helplessness to to feed them. So um, they are they are very brave talking talking about that. And I would like to know why did you choose especially mothers? I think you show one father also with his six kids, but why mostly mothers? How would you consider the role of women? Well, women, as, as we all know, and, uh, as I've been seeing around the world for 20 years, women are the base of everything. They're really, especially in these chaotic situations, extreme situations, is the one that holds the family together, the provider, the everything. Like the women in in these developing countries and uh, also in the West is, is the base of everything. So, of course, she's the one that is taking care of the children when they are malnourished and uh, It was hard to find a man, to be honest. I wanted to have a man, but it was very hard. Uh, and this is one of the paradox of our times as well, no? of not our times, of Asian times and, and of our current times, that women, however, they, they, they sustain the economy, they, they run the economy, they are the base of almost everything. And uh, when it comes to power sharing, they get a very small portion. No? So this is a, a historical imbalance and injustice that we have to solve. And, uh, I know this is a very common place, but you saw who took who did a great management of COVID. You know, New Zealand, uh, Germany. You know, countries led by women, which I agree. And uh, when I in 1994, I went to the UN Women Conference in in Beijing, and there were like 50,000 women, and they were saying, "Today we have real power, then the world will change." And I think that's one of the, our last hopes. Expecting push for women to take over in many, many fields that they, ha they haven't been allowed to, and that will be a big change. So, because as you can see in the film, women are the ones that are holding it together in very extreme situations, being very sensitive, very cooperative, which is something that most men lack, cooperation, uh, you know, responsibility toward the children and the society. It's a very different approach to life, and I think we lose many things while not having more women in power. And uh, for me, There's someone I admire is Angela Merkel, and uh, because when I was doing the, the, the documentary about the Syrian refugee, I was with them in Hungary when she said, "Okay, you're welcome." No, and that was a game changer. These people were trapped in the Balkans, and, and then in Hungary, hundreds of thousands of people trapped. And she had the the vision and the, and you know and, and the power to say, "Yes, let them come." It's it, is that right? So we need more women like that, and not more women like that. We need women to be in those places, not uh, not not relegated as they have been for so many centuries. Wow! Thank you for these empowering words. So, I think I've already come to an end. If there's anything you would like to, I don't know, you would like to add or have a statement, or. Um, I don't know if you want to add anything. <laughs> no, no, I would like I would like the people to watch the film. I would have liked to have only the part of the mobile phones, but I was called, I had a producer and we have a big argument because he wanted to put Western voices also on that. And for me, it was a, well, a commitment. But uh, for me, it's 
is the parts of the mobile phones which I really care about. I mean, what what the people in the West are saying it's okay. <laughs> we saw that so many times. But for me, the powerful thing, and unfortunately, well, life is 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 built of commitments and a middle middle ground. So, so for me, I watch the film, but when I go through the parts that are not the the people telling their own story, I just I get bored. So that's something. Well, we never get the perfect film, but in this case, I felt like we should have stayed more with the premise that it was let the people talk. Is there time? Let these women talk. Is there time? We have spoken too much, the people in the West and the people in the North. So it's time for them to speak. However, I think it's a, it has a lot of truth, the film, and that's a, that's the important part. So great. Thank you so much for this for this film as well. And I hope in the future we can invite you to the next edition of the Human Rights Film Festival, hopefully in person. Let's see. And I wish you the best of luck for your future productions. Thank you very much. It's been a big pleasure, Leonie.